Yeah, man. All right. What is up, everybody out there in podcast land? Welcome back to another episode of The Heck You Want. I am one half of your hosting squad, TB on the sax, and I am joined today by my co-host. Willie. Nigga. <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> Willie. I'm Willie D, yo. All right. I'm Willie D. I'm Willie D. I'm Willie you're such D. A, you're such a fucking girl. Shut up. <laughs> Jesus Shut up. Christ. All right, man. Um, yeah, we, this is just a show where a bunch of dudes, as you can see, we just sit here and we talk a bunch of shit about stuff we find on the internet and stuff that's happening in pop culture. That's pretty fucking cool. Last week, if you missed it, we had our very, very good friend Michael D'Angelo on for part two of an interview series we did called Drums, Please. And uh, it's real good. So y'all should head on over to uh, whatever you listen to podcasts on these days, Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play. Um, whatever it is you are using to consume your podcast and go check out part one and part two of those episodes. But uh, anyway, man, how you doing? I am good, man. Um, got a layback weekend coming. Well, shoot, it's the end of the weekend, but hadn't really done much. Um, just kind of laid around the house pretty much. What about you? Man, another, uh, another long nights. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it, I mean, I'm drinking the coffee like right now on on camera. Like I'm I'm tired. <laughs> um but uh yeah, man. Shout, it, out and to, shout out to Starbucks. Shout out to Starbucks. That creme brulee they got, man, it's fire. I love those. I love those. I got I used to consume those so much actually. I, I used to consume those so much actually that I had to like not. I had to I had to physically stop myself from buying them. Do they stop working? They stop having the effect, the caffeine oh, effect? Oh, no. Uh, uh, well, the little ones did because, you know, they make the, the oh. small ones. But the big yeah. ones, because, like, it, I guess it would be long enough in between the intervals that I would take them, they would work. Mm -hmm. So, like, the little ones for sure stop working. And, I mean, for me in general, coffee is kind of like a – it's a very minimal boost. Yeah. Because I've been drinking coffee for years now, like – I mean, I could I, do I could drink a solid Go three, four cups and, and, and still take a nap. Let me tell you something. I'm the same way with uh, five hour energies. That's not good. Well, well, I mean, it's the same amount of caffeine as a cup of coffee. So they say it's I, just a little I shot. Think, I don't think that's true. I, hey, they don't work for me no more. I'll tell you that. I, yeah, they're not like, supposed to not work. <laughs> like I know. They, yeah. like, they wake me up. Yeah, that's what they, it, they, it gives me a little keep. Yeah. yeah. It just wakes me up, but it, it, the sustainability is all gone. Like there's no, I will say like five hours that I noticed. I, I will say like the ritual of, um, yeah. of drinking That's coffee is a, is a very real thing. Like I, I have a, depending on it's, like, even with me working these nights, man, my circadian rhythm's so off. Like it's, it's, right. it's, it's wild. Um, I couldn't do it, man. I couldn't work night. Oh, it's, I can do it. It's actually that sucks. The only it's it's not bad. It's only bad like the first night of a run of working nights. Like the first night because like your body is used to even if you you stay up late like I do. Like I'm normally up until two or three in the morning anyway. But my body still has a normal shutdown period. So like, and folks, there you go. That's the difference between uh, a forty year old and a twenty something. <laughs> you can still stay up at three o'clock. I cannot do it. I oh man, no. It. Listen, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I nap, okay? I nap. <laughs> like, dude, I nap. Like, working a regular shift from three to eleven, I will take a nap yeah. at twelve from twelve to one thirty, go to work, and then yeah, I'm I'm awake until three in the morning, and then I'll go to sleep at around three, and then I'm up by eight. Man, I have a complete inability to take a nap. I cannot take a nap. You used, I can't do we it. We used to nap, dude. You remember that? God, I can't do it. The nap. Yeah, but I can't. I can't. I can't do it no more. It's like it. If the sun's up, I'm up. Oh, we're gonna make. That's we're gonna it. Make this ASMR. We're gonna make this ASMR. 
<laughs> I got to join in. Here we go. There, there we go. go. There you go. Yeah. Cheers. It's tasty. Man, this man. This I gotta. Nice I gotta. I gotta. I gotta bring you. I gotta bring you some of that. That creme brulee. Um, it sounds good. It's really like you can drink. I mean, I drink black coffee because I like black coffee. But you could. You can no get sugar, this. No cream. No sugar. No cream. Nothing. It's just amazing. You missed that reference, didn't you? you didn't I get that reference, did you? No, I Come got it. Now. Come on, black young coffee, boy. Sugar, no cream. You know, something, something, something in my caffeine dream, baby. What's the? What's the? Uh. Chocolate high. Music soul child in the I got it. Ha ha. Nah, bro. Yes, Heavy it is. D and the boys. Heavy no, D and the boys. Go back. How the fuck would years. I know that? <laughs> well, I'm just saying. You try to admit that you knew the reference. You didn't. It was I Heavy D. India I reuses the same lyric, and if it's, I mean, honestly, if we're talking about a chocolate dream, I'm, I'm not dreaming of Heavy D and the boys. Well, the, the song is called Black Coffee, right? It's, the line is Black Coffee, no sugar, no cream, because that's the type of chick I need down on my team. Oh. Ta da. Well, well <laughs> there you even though Heavy D was like the lightest skinned black dude ever. Yeah, that's what I was like. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. I've seen pictures of Heavy yeah. D. Heavy, he D was... Heavy D, little known fact, Heavy D was my first uh, music purchase, like cassette. Man. I'm dead serious. All right, yeah. if, if, if we're doing this. I want to play need, this. I'm gonna find this song while we're talking. <laughs> if 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 we're doing this, mm -hmm. I need this to be a safe space. What do you mean? I need this to be a. If we're admitting first actual purchases where we spent our own money on music, yeah, this has got to be a safe space. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when American Idol was pop, like really popping, and like all of them could sing? Yeah. When I I I bought this record, I had I couldn't have been any older than like eleven. Um, but I don't know in in between nine eleven because we were living at Pop's house. Yeah, yeah. In between nine eleven, um, <laughs> so I had this little <laughs> SpongeBob record player, CD player, boombox thing back when those were a thing. Uh huh. And it the only thing it came with was um the a uh, spongebob cd with spongebob tracks so it had like f is <laughs> like it's you know there's the fun track and then the c-a-m-p-f-i-r-e-s-o-n-g song like there's a reason i know both of those spongebob songs and i can sing them lyric for lyric whenever they mm -hmm. whenever i hear them. it's because i had that and for weeks that's all i could play like personally that's what i could control so then one day we're in walmart me and my mother my sister and uh i pick up clay aiken's debut record <laughs> <laughs> ah. which which hold on i ain't even gonna hold you he had like two tracks on there that weren't bad mm -hmm. i'm okay. listen listen yeah it was I think it was subconscious me knowing that I was not about at that point in time, I was not about to be able to buy some rap shit with my mom. That was not about to happen. And I wasn't really mother. Yeah. I, not DMX. Nigga, that was what was popping at that time. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she was not about to let me buy that. Even if it was my own money, she'd have been like, nah, go put that back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cause All I saw right, yeah. like, I won't even I won't even hold you. I saw the album where he's like dripping in blood and he's like, Ugh, and yeah. I was like, I I gotta have yeah. that. I need that. Man, DMX. I, I'm I'm not getting off subject, but DMX boy, when he came on, man. Fire. Oh. I'm nowhere near a thug at all, but I that felt like right, I wanted to fight uh, everybody. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I want to throw hands with everybody. Like I'm not a thug either, but like it, Yeah, I'm the furthest thing from a thug, but I wanted to just punch somebody in the face. I wanted to box. I wanted to clean knock somebody out, man. I was, I was out here. That whole album, man, that's, that was one of those albums I played without stopping. Without stopping, without going rewinding, without repeating. I just played it all the way through every time I pushed play. It just didn't stop. Well, speaking of, of crazy influential rap records, 
Let's talk about WAP, man. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give my thoughts. And here's, first of all, everybody who is hating on WAP is a motherfucking hypocrite. Because we've been listening, we've been listening to, we've been listening to do say, stop on my knob, wait till you see my dick. I mean, the fucking whisper song. Like, Mm -hmm. and countless others for years. But the moment a woman who is in full control of herself. And I fuck with the song. I do. I fucks with it. I'm not a big Cardi B fan. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I will be the first one to admit that. I'm not either. The way she owned it, I was like, bruh, I respect it. I respect the hell out of it. Um, but here, here's the thing. It's like, why is it okay for men to, first of all, why is it okay for men to, one, degrade women in songs, talk about drugs, violence, all this other shit, but the moment a woman just wants to brag on herself right. in the same manner, it's all, it's, it's all of a sudden, oh, women need to be better and they're role models and da-da-da-da-da, and they need to support um, you know, higher self-esteem and all this other bullshit. And I'm like, bro, she ain't got self-esteem issues. I don't know if you've heard the song, but she know what she rocking. She she does not lack self-esteem at all. No, she does not lack at self-esteem. All, she does not lack self-respect. Um, and I, I think to to draw that to draw that parallel is a very juvenile way of thinking. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm with you on that. I, I think I, I I can't like that's a that's a very obvious double standard in the music industry. Is like mm-hmm. men as men, we have the freedom to talk about pretty much any subject matter as long as it's not like as long as it's not you know those hot button things but yeah, yeah. women as soon as women decide they want to do the same thing they can't or not that they can't but it once they release that project or whatever it's frowned upon and i'm sick of it like no you're right you're right uh, I'm, I'm very sick of it like you know they, i i saw several posts that were comparing her to like rhapsody and no name and like she should be more like them and i'm like no the fuck she shouldn't they got their own lane, man. They got everybody yeah. has their own lane. And the mm-hmm. cool thing about those rappers in particular is you don't see them tearing each other down like you see men do. You don't they they're don't in be, videos together. They in videos together. They chilling, they kicking it. Cardi B actually put like a couple weeks ago put up, or maybe this was a couple months ago. I don't know. Quarantine has my sense of time all fucked up. Everybody's. Um, <laughs> but uh Cardi B, it was at some point within the past six months. Cardi B put this thing up on her Instagram. And it was basically a video just praising like every female rapper she'd ever heard of. And she was like, even in the video, she's like, there's a bunch of them that I haven't heard of. So y'all keep doing your thing. And you don't see not of the, not of the quote unquote gatekeeper generation of hip hop. You don't see them doing that. Mm -hmm. You're right. So I just, I, I don't, I don't understand. Like personally for me, I like again. I'm not. A, I'm not a Cardi B fan. Like I don't go out of my way to listen to her music. But right, there was such an uproar over it. I was like, all right, I got to listen. And you know what? I I respect her. And it's not that I haven't respected her. It's just her music's just not my thing. Yeah, um, that's my thing, right? Yeah, like her her music's just not necessarily my thing. However, mm-hmm. I do fuck with WAP. I fuck with that song. So. I ain't, that song that song make it it's, bounce, man. It, it, it just slaps. makes you bounce. That, and and here's my thing about it, man. Um. We had Little Kim. Like, yeah. Did anybody forget about that? We had Little Kim. You yeah, know that song, Kim. My Neck, My Back by Kaya? That song, I mean, we, we've had this. So I don't know why Yo, everybody you know it was crazy? It you know what's crazy? Like, just going back into history, um, there was a song uh, discovered in the 30s and 40s that purely talks about fucking. Now, I saw, like, a everybody posting a picture of this person yeah, what, yeah, yeah. okay tell me so, about it i don't know hold, I don't on, know. hold on i gotta find it i gotta find it but you go ahead i'm gonna I'm talk because uh like yeah, give, man, we had little kim man i mean like look i'm gonna say this little kim's and i'm gonna post this on the youtube on the youtube uh page but you'll see this clip but little kim's even her album cover her album cover i don't know which album it was it was her first one i guess but man Little boys couldn't look at that little album cover, man. It's gonna cause some problems. Who couldn't? 
and that's how that's how um that's how risque she was but she was a groundbreaker in that measure but every, you know nobody had a problem with it man i just think that is weird now that uh like i heard CeeLo say something about it and i was like oh fuck CeeLo, bro CeeLo, didn't you almost go to jail for something for rape <laughs> for rape <laughs> yeah and like yeah. you know who i really like i really hope to god doesn't fucking say anything about this shit who's this rick motherfucking ross I, man I, i'd be i doubt it because yeah, uh, but you know do you know why i say that mm-mm. And I was listening to another podcast and they brought up a very, very interesting point. They were like, Rick Ross literally has a song about drugging a woman and taking her wherever and, and smashing her without her not, well, not smashing. Let me not change the language because he raped her basically in the song and she ain't even know. Really? It. Yeah. Like, yeah. Molly all yeah. know her drink. She ain't even know it. Took it <sighs> back to my crib. She ain't even know it. Yeah, bro, like, I haven't heard that song. See, real this, fucking song. See, this is my problem with music. Sometimes, man, is that I'm not much of a lyric person. Like, I catch like the the main lyrics, but a lot of times mm-hmm. I don't listen to the songs because I'm listening to music so much. I get caught yeah. up in the beat. I'm, and, I'm the same. But uh, yeah, so a lot of times words will just get by me. I mean, I I got some clients that, that come to my job, and one in particular, he'll like he'll listen to like some old Rolling Stone song that I've heard, and he'll like, you know, that song is about such and such. You know, that song is about the Civil War, uh, not Civil War, but like uh, apartheid or something. I'm like, really? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I, the Rolling I, I Stones, kind of like, like you know? At, at, you know, the Rolling Stones are very interesting in that way. Like, they're super rock stars. Man, they got some joints. And Rolling oh yeah, sure. got the some Rolling songs, Stones man. have some hits. I, yeah. And Mick Jagger, Mick Jagger, and uh, 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 what's the fucking guitar player's name? Um, Keith Richards. Keith Richards are never gonna fucking die. They no. will never die. I think, um, I, I think I think they actually like went and had a, some kind of seance with them. Oh, I found the lyrics. Okay, Something. okay, okay. So in the '30s, there was yeah. this singer named Lucille Bogan, right? Say that name again. Lucille Bogan. She black lady. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So what's the song called? Okay. The song is called Shave Em Dry. <laughs> right? <laughs> that already sounds. Oh, dude. <laughs> I'm having, to, I'm having to, to prepare myself for reading this on the air. Like, <laughs> You're going to start blushing. <laughs> ah, man, listen, this is. This, uh, Go ahead. All right. So. I got nipples on my titties, big as the end of my thumb. I got something between my legs that'll make a dead man come. Oh, daddy, daddy, won't you shave them dry? Now draw it out. Want you to grind me, baby, grind me till I cry. Say I fucked all night and the night before, baby. And I feel like, I feel just like I want to fuck, fuck some more. Oh, great God, daddy, grind me, honey, and shave me dry. And it just, it, it goes on like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> in the 30s. In the 30s. <laughs> I mean, it ain't like people wouldn't have a sex in the 30s, so, you know. People was, it's, the crazy thing is, is like, could you, this is something I like to think about. Like, just, I don't know why my mind enters into these things. But you could, could you imagine how unsanitary sex was, like, pre- 1940 yeah it's I mean, disgusting I, yeah yeah like because people but, didn't have regular access to bathing and like oh ugh. no 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 and like i don't health. even want no nah. you talk about something i don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> that i'm just saying man sex no nah, but you're right i get what you're saying it's disgusting i was like oh yeah. mm. y'all yeah, was but, but see fucking... that's amazing man it's like people are surprised i mean me i'm surprised here but i gotta remember there's nothing new people been there's having babies people for been... years people been having sex for millions you know, you how, know... About, how long has humanity been around, been around? millions of years you're correct all animals have always had sex right yeah so why is that new and why is it a problem to talk about it i, I understand don't now i don't want i don't want my kid listening to it but that's on you that's yeah, not exactly. on the artist it don't bother me yeah like uh, that's another thing is like parents are all parents uh, some parents i won't say all parents but mm-hmm. like there's a sizable population of parents that are like i can't believe you put this out there and my kid could listen to this and i'm like well that's not sure. on them to monitor <laughs> your child yeah 
Yeah. Like, right. And I'm, I'm not downplaying um, the, the difficulties or the ease of parenting. Cause I'm sure it's a very, very hard job. And I mean, I know that as a kid, there was certain stuff, you know, especially in middle school when I was living with grandma that she didn't want me listening to or watching, but guess what? I watched that shit anyway. Yeah. And, um, you've, you've seen beer commercials, right? Yeah. Um, I don't see kids going, parents can stop the kids from going out and buying. Well, it's illegal. Degree. Right. The same parameters, like parents ain't coming after like, you know, uh, Coors Light but, because the kids, well, yeah, the kid went out and got the stuff. I mean, that's, it's, it's on the parents to yeah. police all that stuff, man. So they can put out any kind of music that they want, they want. right? Yeah, that's yeah. And, and, if, and honestly, if Cardi B, if Cardi B fine, and like, here's the thing, her music's not my favorite, but she fine as shit. And if she wants yeah. to talk about how wet her pussy is, I'm okay with that. I'm not. It's hers. I, 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 it's hers. I don't got problems. It's hers. It's hers. It's hers. Cheers to you. Coffee cheers to you, Cardi B. Mm. Mm. There you go. Starbucks. Yeah. Starbucks. Sponsoring the episode. Starbucks, hit us up for that collab, <laughs> yo. We got bills to pay. Uh-huh. Hey, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, that's just my thoughts on it. I don't, I don't think, I don't, especially, I think it's funny that I, I like, I also like to draw these parallels sometimes that like COVID and Corona have really amplified people's ability to be upset um especially with all the 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 tumultuous moments we've had this year from the racial because you have no distractions because because there are no distractions yeah so like once something triggers someone and it starts to trigger like it's like a really weird domino effect where it triggers one person then that triggers two more people then that triggers six people and it just it it happens overnight which is astounding and Mm -hmm. that just really speaks to how crazy the fucking internet world is, is like that song got released and literally within two hours, people were posting about it upset. Yeah. That was, that was the wildest shit to me. I'm like, you guys didn't even give it time to marinate yet. Like y'all just, it's like, it's literally like some motherfucker waited for the song to drop. And then it was Twitter warrior. Like, I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Bro, I'm, I'm guaranteed that people do that. Like people just people right now are sitting around trying to find a reason to be mad. Oh, for like sure. literally trying to find a reason to be upset about something. Absolutely. Oh, I got this. Oh, oh, I got this song now. Let me let me let me go, you know, make a post and see how much attention I can get from being f- fake mad about a song. Right. You know? Like, it's like, are you really that upset about a song? Personally, I'm glad she wrote a banger because like, hey, I'm sick of 2020. I needed some 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 <laughs> something to listen to. Needed some levity. Like, man. Hey. Quick oh, question. Is oh. that song like a, uh, is it a straight off single? Is it on an album? It's a single. Somebody got the album coming out? It's a single. I think Cardi has an album coming out, but for right okay. now it's a single. Um, listen to, I'm going to send it to you, mm-hmm. but listen, listen to Feel by Jay and Leanne LaHavis. LaHavis? LaHavis. LaHavis. All right. You got to, yeah, you got to send that to it's, me. So I'll forget that. Oh my God. I, I had downloaded, so he has, three volumes of of one of his records called jesse so there's jesse volume mm-hmm. one jesse volume two jesse volume three it's on jesse volume two and uh i don't know how i glossed over that track because i'd never heard it up until like last night it was like 4 a.m and i'm like trying to find something to power me through that last little three hour chunk of my shift and i come across yeah. that and it just grooved so hard and leanne la Havis has a beautiful voice and Jacob Collier can write the fuck out of harmonies. Oh my god! I know, man. See, I, I, can I ask you something? Mm-hmm. All right, this is gonna get a little technical. Yeah. But why do I feel like that's, he's he's not singing those? He is. I feel like he's. I feel like he's using the program, man. I, I, oh well, no, he sounds like, so he, generated. He. I mean, he's very open about that. Like he does do um like a little pitch correction for the but for them like in post like just to you know kind of nudge but it's like he's so he's singing like fits yeah like (laughs) he's no he's he's singing that like jacob collier is a freak yeah he is a freak of nature i don't know something about him bothers me man it's 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 preconceived he's too good at everything maybe i don't know he yeah he bothers me for some reason i don't know if it's his if it's his uh, and a lot of people expression. don't. Like, a lot of people don't like the actual sound of his voice. It's not that the music I, sounds bad. People just don't like like his voice. Maybe that's what it is. Because I I think to me it sounds like it's an act. Like 
that he's got like an operatic type of baritone voice. And I'm like, that shouldn't come out. It doesn't, it doesn't fit the way he looks. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, I mean, it's, it's, it's the same thing. Like a, uh, like my Wayne Shorter thing. I love Wayne Shorter. For those of you who don't know, Wayne Shorter uh, is arguably one of the greatest composers, improvisers, and is known the world over as one of the greatest saxophone players of all time. Um, but G. shut up. Um, oh, sorry. He, Actually, even Kenny G will tell you Wayne is OG GOAT. Um, but all that being said, and again, I love Wayne Shorter. I do. I am not the biggest fan of the way he sounds on tenor saxophone. Now, see, that's that's an inside thing because I, I wouldn't have been able to hear that. Like, So if he plays alto, it's fine. Well, he plays soprano. He doesn't really play alto that much, or not that I've heard on recording anyway. Because of the um, finger, the key? I don't know. I mean, he just—he probably can play all the horns. I mean, he probably just doesn't. That, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure he can. It's just keys, but yeah. Um. So he. So you saying he sounds worse? I don't. Like, it's it's just not. It's not bad. It's just I don't like it. Really? Yeah. I just I'm That's not. Odd. I'm not a fan. Like his sound to me is really uh. It's. And again, it's not. It it's on some tracks. No one else could have done it, but Wayne Shorter. That's. Undeni- like weather report wayne shorter with weather report yeah. is fire that band yeah. fit him perfectly and then wayne shorter on weather like report the huh what'd you say? i was saying weather report great band great band. yeah weather report's amazing um and then uh there's like a couple of his records where he's phenomenal on like adam's apple uh adam's apple um what's it witch hunt uh like and a, and a lot of my favorite standards came from those records but like there's just there's a there's a in some of his in a lot of his tracks there's a tenniness like a like a like a thinness to his sound that's weird to me mm-hmm. it just it like i don't so is that a and that just comes from years of hearing saxophone players is that an engineering thing or is that a him? You know? That's him. That's what really? he sounds like. He, he, he sound and, and like what's crazy. So I guess I should say, I don't, I don't like periods of Wayne. So like, I don't like, I don't like the way Wayne Shorter sounds from, I would say 1964 mm-hmm. to maybe 72. I don't like the way he sounds. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just I, and I don't know what it is. It just it, that his sound, his saxophone sound, just does not resonate with me during that's, that time frame. That's but odd. That's, like, that's that's interesting. But I'm I'm uh, I'm gonna have to see if you you making me gonna go like listen to see if I can figure like hear what you're talking about. Yeah, man. that's 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 interesting to me. Okay. But here's the thing though. Here's the thing though. Again, I just I'm not the biggest fan of his saxophone sound. But Wayne Shorter as a composer and like his improvisational ideas. Yeah. Oh. God, there's a reason Wayne's one of the goats. Like, and and like sound aside, like the the lines he chooses to play over like certain chord changes, I'm just like, God, damn it. Yeah. And like Wayne Shorter <laughs> is probably on the on the is it is it Speak No Evil? Is the record? I don't know if the I can't remember if the record's called Witch Hunt or if it's called Speak No Evil, but they're they're both songs on the same record, and the record is titled one of those songs. Mm-hmm. Um. And the way he uses pentatonics through that whole record is just like Man, about to make everybody go what? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> that got real deep into. It. Well, not real deep because like there's a there's another there's that got really music heavy for a second, guys. Sorry, this was not supposed. There to be you go, people deep episode. inside the mind of a musician. <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, speaking of crazy Corona times, yeah. How do we feel about college campuses closing, uh, closing, closing fall sports? Uh, I feel bad for the kids, but ultimately, I, it's I the best feel season. like, yeah, I feel like it's, a, I feel like it's a good thing to do. Um, Did you see Trevor Wallace is like, no, Trevor, Trevor, not Trevor Wallace. What's the, what's the Lawrence, Lawrence, yes. the dude from uh, Clemson. Yeah, Clemson. Yeah. He, um, Sorry, Trevor Wallace. <laughs> um, it's okay. I don't there, even know who Trevor Wallace is. There, he's a TikToker. <laughs> well, he's not a TikToker actually. He's a he's a comedian. He's worked with the All Deaf yeah. Crew. Um, okay. Um, but uh, anyway, 
he actually put a thing out and was like, uh, he feels that they're not any more at risk um, playing. And then he felt like, you know, in order to ensure that they could play the game, everyone's going to want to follow more stricter guidelines. But I mean, we literally just saw someone, uh, a Seattle Seahawks rookie, try to sneak someone <laughs> into the fucking, yeah. into the fucking yeah. hotel. And guess what happened? They cut his ass like they should have. Snap. Yeah. They ain't play- I mean, they're not playing. They're not They're playing not with playing. this, man. And, and like, I, I wish people would understand. And this, to all of you out there who don't believe coronavirus is a very real thing, at this point in time, I have had three friends who have either had it or come into contact with it at some point, and it affected them all extremely different. That's the scary yeah. thing about this virus. You it's don't know. Not, you don't know. And if you have a pre existing health condition, it's going to fuck you up. Yeah. Um, so wear the damn mask. Just wear it. I mean, really, is it, is it really <laughs> that inconvenient to put a fucking mask on while you're in the grocery store for 15, 20 minutes and then you take it off when you get in your car? Is it really that inconvenient? No, like, come on now. Let me tell you the only problem I find with the whole mask thing, right, is when I get to the door of a store and I forgot it. Other yeah. than that, and I got to go back to my car. Yeah, like, other oh, than that, shit, the mask. Yeah, other than <laughs> that, I don't care. To be honest with you, I almost prefer wearing the mask, man. I have walked past some people I didn't want to talk to, and they didn't know who I was. I swear to God, I, man, I have stood <laughs> by so many people in a grocery store just because I had a mask on, and I saw them look at me like, is that, is that real? <laughs> and I just, you know lived, I just kept going. I just kept going. I'm Honestly, like, All you right. know what the best thing about living in Savannah <laughs> for the past three years is? is I'm, I'm an extroverted introvert, so like, if you if you strike a conversation with me, I'll, yeah. I'll talk to you. I'll chop it up. Mm-hmm. I have no problem doing that, but I'm not going to go out of my way to do it. That's um, me. But outside of like the small ish circle of friends I have here, mm-hmm. no one knows me. <laughs> I have complete autonomy. Yeah. I can go yeah. where I need to. I can leave and it's fine. And Savannah's actually like, like the Savannah area is really big. So like you can literally like I can stay in my I, it's the city, quote unquote, but I can stay in Port Wentworth and I have everything I need right here. I unless I need something extremely specific, I never have to actually go into Savannah. Hey, you got that problem, right? No, it's not a problem, but you got that until this podcast blows up. Hey, man, I'm OK with that. I, I, I understand. I understand what I'm what I'm asking for. I want Joe Rogan level fame, baby. I want it. I yeah. want Joe Rogan. Hey, we ain't got no, we ain't got a whole bunch of followers and stuff, but somebody signed us. All right, just do it. Just do it. Just, just do it. Us. Just do it. Right? Just, hey, man. We need if you're listening out. If you're listening out there and you own a radio station and you need a couple DJs or like morning show hosts, hit us up. I'll move. If you're, if you're in Wilmington or wherever the fuck you are, you just pay me moving expenses and a, and a modest salary. I'll move. I'll move to do it. Oh, hell yeah. I'll move. Yeah. Shoot, this at, at least I can uh, work. Wink, yeah. wink. You know, yeah. So, um, but yeah, but yeah, man. Canceling, canceling like fall sports is a, is is a good thing. The mask is a good thing. Um, I, I I just I wish people would stop politicizing this. That's that's what really bugs me. Into a right versus left thing, and I'm like, guys. But you know what? You know what? Uh, Tristan, man, I, I tell you this. I uh, I'm in the middle of it. I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle of the politicizing of because I think, I think, there's, I think there's both, and I think that you know, <sighs> I'm not going deep into some saying there's like a conspiracy happening, but some of the stuff just don't make sense. Well, yeah, but here's the thing, I I understand what you're saying in that some of the some of the stuff doesn't make sense, and like a lot of the information that we get gets either revised, edited, or changed like within a week or so. But you got to understand no one was prepared for this so they're oh, figuring the sh- no how do you prepare for a pandemic well <laughs> you, you you want me to go conspiracy go, theory go conspiracy theory because like I, I here's my thing i think what this showed is that a lot of ideas that the right considered socialist actually yeah. makes sense now like a universal income 
because when people can't aren't allowed to fucking oh. work because of a global pandemic. <gasps> oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then you got to pay your bills. Yes. How the fuck are you going to do that when you can't go to work? Rely on. Oh, shut up. Government. Okay. Okay. That's. Hey, you told me to go. You told me to go. I'm just. Okay, I'm just telling but, you. Okay, I'm in the here's middle. The thing. Here's the thing. Bit. If 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 that if that particular thing were the case, right? And we were supposed to rely on the government, quote unquote, and they wanted to make the people sheeple, and you know, all the I'm this that, and, all this yeah. that, and the third. I just threw it in there because I know you hate it. Um, mm-hmm. If I was going to do that, I would have already implemented a universal income. And that way, when the pandemic happened, if I supposedly caused it, they would, the people would be so thankful. No, no. Gave them a universal income. And they can survive. And then they come out of this and they listen to whatever I say. That's how it would work. You got to create fear, not thankfulness. You got to create fear. Fear runs everything, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm not, like, I'm not saying that there is, but what I'm saying is, so it's, it's, it's coincidental. You're, that not, somehow, dis- right you're not dismissing the, of, the possibility. No, because it's somehow right in the middle of this whole pandemic, we are in a coin shortage. How did that happen? How people do we run out of money. coins? What are you at? People are spending money. And if you can't work, like they, there are people who have to work to mint the coins. And if they True. can't go to work, like, man, it can't be that hard to make some coins. It can't be. It can't be that hard to make a penny. Although it costs more to make a penny than it than then it's worth. Is worth, which is but, dumb. <laughs> like some of this stuff just don't make sense. Man. It doesn't, and, and I'm not. I'm not discounting that a lot of it is crazy and it, it doesn't make sense. But like, we are literally in an unprecedented time. Yeah. There, there's no. There's yeah. no standard. There's no clear way out so i think i think that assuming that the that the government has the answer to everything and i know some of you listeners don't like joe grogan but i'm gonna i'm gonna quote him on this one because this was actually very good people are expecting our government to have the answer but it's not like they passed a series of rigorous tests and all this other stuff to prove that they could handle a pa- a pandemic or anything of the like, or an economy collapse, they were voted in by the people. So what ends up happening is they're just normal people who got caught with their pants down like everyone else. True. And they're figuring it out as they go. I, I, I will agree with that. See that's why that's see that's and that's the difference between me. I can listen to that side. I'm like, you know what that makes sense. No, and that's I, the thing. I'm <laughs> I, like that's I love I love listening to conspiracy theories, and a lot of them have some merit. Yeah. Now JFK the JFK thing is just that's just weird. I'm not touching that. But hold up, what what you know how people say that JFK was like an inside job and da da da, and you know yeah. There, there's a, there's a whole thing. Um. And that's a that's a really heady thing that we will we'll do a conspiracy theory episode. We'll, we'll, actually, let's make that next week's episode. Let's do conspiracy theories. You find five and I, or you find three and I'll find three. Cool. That are interesting. I'm on it. We'll do I'm that next it. week. All right. Um, but Biden done went black again, man. I know. I, I know. was like, I was like, oh, Papa Joe, oh, Papa Joe so, got himself a black running mate in, in Kamala Harris. Now, I Kamala, will say, man, you get Kamala, a name right. Ah, yeah. Kamala, Kamala. Sorry. Say her name. Kamala. Kamala Harris. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. Um, now I will say she's not my favorite. I, you know, black woman president, whoop whoop whoop. I'm not I'm not saying that she's not qualified in any way. It's just, you know, I was I was Yang Gang. I liked Andrew Yang. I wanted Andrew Yang to run. Um You want a who? Andrew sorry. Yang. Andrew Yang. Okay. Um and that, and yeah, again, I'm not sliding her. Like I, I, I just, I, I, you got your I, preferences, man. Yeah. You, you, what you want is what you want. Um, that's, hey, that's, that's but your thing. Hey, I will say that now is not the time to vote third party. Now is not the time we got to get this motherfucker out of office. Hey man, let me tell you something. Um, uh, and his whole administration, like it, it's gotta go. <laughs> I, and, and again, I, 
I say we got to get this motherfucker out of office, but I say that to say that we have to get the people that are working with him out because those are the people that are really doing shit. Like Trump more or less is we, he's proven it time and time again. He doesn't know what the fuck is going on. That has been, um, confirmed unofficially is that is that a thing it's confirmed he, unofficially that he, he doesn't really know what he's he doing, doesn't right? really know what he's doing he has no idea what the fuck is going on um i mean you can see it in countless interviews trump has absolutely no idea what's happening absolutely no yeah. idea um and it's it's scary to watch oh yeah um and and this is my thing about kamala harris i don't really know that much about her well, I apparently don't. she was a she was a DA in California. Yeah, I knew I knew that, but I don't I don't but know she also, where like, she sits as far she, as the politics. She stuff. also voted on a lot of things that are. She voted in favor of a lot of things that are detrimental to the community. But well, I got to ask this question. I, I, here's, like, here's, it, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Here's the thing. Like, I yes, she voted on things that ultimately were not good for the black community. I get it. I understand that. However, what we got to remember is that that shit was years ago and people grow, people change. Like, first and foremost, the number one goal, like, I mean, realistically, if you look at the ticket either way, the the party is not going to be ideal. It's not going to be ideal, but it's better than Trump. It's better than that. It's better than that. Yeah, and that's like I said, if it's it's not a time to be like, uh, well, I'm just not going to vote. I don't like need to win it. This is not the time. Yeah. Um, as far, and as far as her policies and her politics go, man, I, I don't, it's like you said, she's, she's done some things that are, that weren't in favor of the community, but is that because I need to hear her motives behind it? Yeah. And you that's know, the so thing. I can't like, just I, go based off just because I don't like yeah. them. I, I, I do. I would rather hear. I want to hear what the thought process is. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And I'm not just going to be like, I didn't like again, this. And here's the thing that people don't think about. Like, she could have been setting herself up for a presidential run long ago. Yeah. And in order to yeah. do that, you, sometimes you got to do shit that isn't good at the time. But once you get to where you go, once you get to where you're then going, you can make some changes. then you can make some changes. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I want to believe that that's what it is. I don't know for sure, but like, I, I, my gut is telling me that that's what it was. I'm like, you can't tell me that this black woman decided to vote on a bill to vote for a bill that sent millions of black men to jail for years at a time. Like you with, with no thought to what it would do right to the community. You can't tell me that there's no way. Because I, I feel like it's one of those things. Some of those things you said that she sent, um, she has some bills that, that sent black men to jail for a long time now. And my issue with that is, is it like a bill that just should have, it's not like the bill said we're going to send black people yeah, it's to jail. Yeah, it's not one of those. It's one of those. It, it, here, so I don't. But it wanna, comes across as the whole systemic thing. Yeah, it's it's, it's systemic a systemic thing. thing. Right? It's not a. It's not a. It's not a. The bill said black people specifically. Yeah, like they send them niggas like, to jail. But like the <laughs> yeah the stipulations behind the which I got to do some research and, and see Me too. exactly what it was. I, like again, guys, we're not supposed to be your source of information. Yeah. We're just talking shit. It, it, um, yeah. So 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 don't do not vote based off what we're saying please do your don't own research. do your own do damn your own research. research do your own research like willie and i are gonna do um we get on here and we talk shit but like actually it's it's really interesting the amount of like conversations him and i will have about this kind of stuff um yeah but like the bill like at least from what i was understanding and i and i read up on it a couple weeks ago but my memory's a little hazy just because I, I i've had a lot of shit going on But the bill, the way the bill was set up is that the majority of people who would be affected were African-American. Right. And it's like I said, that's due to systemic things. Mm -hmm. Systemic things. Way deeper than just the bill. Way deeper than just Things that were set back a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And and Kamala. That makes sense. But it's like it's. Like I said, don't listen to us. You know, we we have our opinions, right? Yeah. And this is this is a a a very. a very surface level opinion. This isn't even a fully formed thought yet. This is just where I'm at right now, yeah. digesting information. Um, I'll tell you what. She, 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 
and you don't you do not vote based off of this but i like the way she looks walking beside, walking up to a podium i like she 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 has a great presentation you know you know what it is it's been four years since we've had someone like that <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, to where you that's, feel comfortable when you see them walk up to a podium and you know they're gonna they might so they might not say some shit you necessarily like but they're not gonna almost start it, a war <laughs> you won't you won't leave it you won't leave baffled yeah right. like you won't leave like what the fuck just happened <laughs> what, did you, what did she just say oh, okay what? okay you know what <laughs> fuck this we're gonna talk about this because i'm really excited about it but all right so Astronomers have found a galaxy similar to the Milky Way more than 12 billion light years away. Do you know how happy my inner nerd is right now? How happy what? My inner nerd. <laughs> no, man. All right. I don't, I don't get it. So. Okay. okay. So here's the thing. That's where the UFOs came from that we just been. Seeing? I mean, maybe they don't know. They don't know. That's, <laughs> that's what's cool. It's like, it's totally unexplored territory. Um, so basically what happened is the gal and, and this is, a, this is all speculation. I'm not going to act like, cause they don't have answers yet. They just literally discovered this like last week. Um, mm -hmm. so what's really cool is that it, it kind of opens the door a little bit wider for me. And I'm not a scientist by any means. I'm just a wannabe nerd. And I, I like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For me, this opens the possibility of par parallel galaxies and or parallel universes where like, let's say instead of life forming on Earth, life formed on fucking Venus and mm -hmm. we adapted to Venus's climate. And there's like, it opens the door for there to be the possibility of parallel universes or even if they aren't in the way we think, that it opens the door that life exists out there beyond us. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, this may sound a little crazy, but the universe is so vast. You cannot tell me that we are alone in the universe. There's oh, no, I don't believe that. For I don't believe that at all. No. I don't know if it's like, I don't know if it's aliens in the way we think of aliens, like, you know, beep, boop, beep, boop, whatever, whatever. I don't yeah. think it's that. I, I, I do believe that, you know, there could be plant life on one planet. There could be uh, animal life on another. There could be humanoid life. There's there's so many things that could be possible within the realm of the universe. Because I mean, if you like, we're the Earth is a very very small speck in space, tiny, tiny. Yeah. And one of the crazy things was like I was, I was um, watching this thing, and it said if you think about how long humans have existed on this planet, it's literally the end of a pen, like a so like a like a like a stick pen. It's yeah. literally the pointy end of the pen. The rest of that is how old it's fast, man. Yeah. Is how old the universe and the planet is. Like that's fucking uh -huh. nuts. And to think and see, that we're the only ones, that's complete like you're get over yourself. Hey, let me tell you this. I'm I'm saying like this. We can't be the smartest things. Like no! humans can't be the top we of the cannot be the top. As dumb as we are. Oh my we god. We can't be it. We can't be the end all be all of beings, right? Like, ah, <laughs> we are too dumb. We too are dumb. way too dumb. Like, I promise you, we've probably been visited by aliens millions of times, and they were like, nope. Well, you know, people like to say that, uh, well, not people, but, you know, some people have speculated that, you know, like in the ocean where we can't, like, when they discover something, they think they'll say something like, well, this, this thing resembles, it has like, no no known relative on earth or some some kind of strange fish they'll find or something like that and it's like a complete anomaly like they think like they don't think this but like the octopus yeah <laughs> i heard a guy say Man, an octopus has got to be like an alien they just adapted to earth because just to, just because Maybe. of the way it moves the way it works and it's actually a very intelligent oh animal. octopus is octo octopi octopi i think octopi yeah um octopi are incredibly intelligent and they're yeah they're strong. really smart they're, they're so strong, strong smart and they like, adapt there's... they change colors like they literally change colors and it's not like when a gecko changes colors like octopus octopi why do i mm -hmm. keep wanting to say oct it's because we were talking about pussy earlier um yeah we just <laughs> talked about cardi b yeah uh 
but yeah, like they like I mean, yeah, Oct- Octopi are incredibly smart and they're incredibly strong, and the ab- the adaptation they have of of camouflage is second to none in the atom- animal kingdom. Like exactly. they like chameleons change color too, but like you can Octopi, sit there and watch them do it. Yeah, Octopi, it happens just like that. Not instant. It takes a minute, but it happens really quick. Well, there are some, I don't know if it's, if it's a form of squid. I'm sorry, we, t- we ain't talking about space, but a form of squid or an octopus that, like, it can change color just like that. Like, it oh, actually yeah, yeah, yeah. It has some kind of bioluminescence or something, and it changes color. I don't know. You know but what's crazy to think about, like, when it comes to squid, though? There are giant squid out there. Like, that's a real thing. Yeah. That's a real yeah. thing in the ocean. Giant the f- squid are real. Man, the fact that we don't know what's down there is scary to me. Than, like, I'd rather go in space and like be in a ship or some kind of spaceship and go deep into space then they go to the like the bottom of the ocean i'm so scared it was in the ocean man i hate i don't even like thinking about it man here's the thing like like here's my thing about the ocean i i love the ocean like i i think but i i want to keep the ocean the way it is like i i would love to know what's down there i would i would honestly mermaids possibly shit i don't know um i'm not gonna discount it i mean whatever i mean actually that that myth has kind of been debunked but debunked in a way that doesn't really make sense like people say that people people say that uh mermaids well yeah people scientists were saying that mermaids were actually like only seen when the sailors were like dehydrated and hallucinating and they actually turned out to be like manatees and sea cows yeah um which i get i mean you on a ship long enough and shit happens whatever they want us to know tristan whatever yeah whatever they want us to know <laughs> it is what it is um yeah. but i just i like as much as i would love to explore it i want to keep it unknown i think that there i think that much like with space i don't want I like it interests me it really mm-hmm. does and the ocean, the unknown of the ocean really interests me. But I think the, the bat, like, because humans have a nasty tendency to once we learn something, we fuck it up. Oh, exactly. Oh. Like, and, and what yes. would happen, like, the ramifications, I, like, I am more afraid of what, ha- like, what the ramifications are if we fully understand and comprehend what's out in space and what's in the depths of the ocean. I am scared of that. You know because the freaky, ocean though? plays a huge part in our environment. And if we yeah. fuck that up, we all die. But you know what's, and you know what's freaky about it? Is the fact that we can get to the moon. We can get to Mars. Have we been to Mars? There have been rovers to Did, Mars, but like you can't. Well, you, we, we've sent things to Mars set, and brought yeah, them back. And brought them back. Mm-hmm. But we can't hit the bottom of the ocean that's on our actual planet. That is weird. The pressure is different, man. I mean, you, you I like, mean, I get that, but yeah. we haven't figured out how to get to the bottom of an ocean that's mm-hmm. actually on our planet, but we figured out how to land something on another planet. Like, that's weird. I mean, the thing is, is like, you, you got to look at it. Like, when you're looking at traveling the ocean depths, you can, like, there, there are people who have been to the deepest point of the ocean. There are people who've been to the, to the bottom of the Marianas Trench. There are people who've done that. I don't that. believe, are you sure? Mm-hmm. Look it up. And James Cameron. Back? James Cameron did it. Eh. He, yeah, he had like a sub. But here's the thing about it: is you can't, you can't. There's as of right now, there's no way to build a craft large enough to take a team down there, which is what it would take to study it. it it's literally going there and coming back. Like, so I heard about James Cameron's thing, but I didn't think he went to the bottom. I thought he went deeper than anybody else, but I don't think he. Hit I the think bottom. he went to the bottom. Because that... let me let me fact check real quick. Yeah, because. Well, I'm, I, I think I know he made something because James Cameron's got more money than God, whoever. Yeah, but I think he just went deeper than anybody else. I don't think he hit it. But you're right. They don't. They. But it it just baffles me that we can't get to the bottom of our own ocean. It's crazy. But we can get to another planet like Mars and bring stuff back. And it's just some. Um, who who sent the thing to Mars? Was it uh, Elon Musk? Or to the moon or something? Either Elon Musk. Are you talking about moon? recently? Yeah. Uh, what did he? What did he? Well, do? Elon Musk and NASA have a thing. They're working together. He's working with NASA. Mm-hmm. 
Cause man, they you see some of those fish that be coming up and stuff, and them things like can light up the. Um, they all all of them have like bioluminescence, and I never thought I'd use bioluminescence twice in a conversation, but I just did it. Hey man, I'm all about <laughs> elevating the mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, hold on, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to. I know uh, you're looking for the James Cameron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we'll do, we'll cut that and come back. <laughs> um. No, yeah. Yeah, what? He did it. He went to the bottom of the Marianas Trench. Not the trench. So, so okay, here, here it is. Um, actually, this is from Wikipedia. Hold on. That could be... That Wikipedia could be. is not the end all be all. Yeah, that, was a, that could be fake. Yeah, he did it. Okay, it's on National Geographic. Um... So yeah, uh, so after a faster than expected, it only took it took him seventy minutes to get down there. That's crazy. Um, so after a seventy minute uh, seventy minute descent, or no, 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 sorry, backwards. It took him two hours and thirty six minutes to get down there. It only took him seventy six minutes to come back up, um, or seventy minutes to come back up. Sorry, um, but he went to the deepest point in the Marianas Trench, which is Challenger Deep. And that's from National Geographic. He did it. Well, wow. Okay. And he's the only person to have gone that deep and explored that deep in depth. Now, so he can do that, but he can't make Avatar 2. There's a whole lot of other things. I mean, COVID. I mean, I need another Avatar, man. I, it's No, it's great. It's fantastic. It's you know what's I've crazy? Twice in the theater. I didn't I I didn't know this was a thing but apparently like when like when Avatar first came out and it was in theaters and shit um there were people leaving the theater like depressed because they couldn't go live like the Navi Oh my god <laughs> like, <laughs> like it was a very real thing but like I think here's here's the here's here's why I like like I get it cuz like Hey, that's how you know you made a good movie, right? <laughs> yeah, like I get it, cause like it was a good fucking movie, and it was. on top of that, like somewhere deep seated in the back of our minds, like we all know that that like the way they live is actually what we're supposed to be like. True. No, that's how like, life is supposed to be. That's how life is supposed to be. It's supposed to be really connected to nature, and it's supposed to be this, that, and the third. Like um, another really interesting thing I was listening to was like, you know, if if we um like the only reason humans are the top of the food chain is because we figured out how to store food and use tools that makes sense yeah i get that um like because i mean there are plenty of animals out there that can reason Mm -hmm. there there are you know the the interesting thing is that humans what was and this is my opinion this isn't scientific fact so don't fucking you fucking click warrior t- keyboard warrior people out there I, I will fight you it can be whatever cuz um um but the thing that was our biggest help has also turned into our biggest detriment so our ability to to build things use tools um to make weapons to protect ourselves mm-hmm. um like now one of the really interesting things and this isn't an original thought i had this is something i'm stealing from somewhere i heard um but it made me think about it it's um you know we're designed to get sun like even white people are designed to get sun um and now we spend so much time inside because it's fucking hot outside um Mm -hmm. that everyone has some sort of vitamin d deficiency which is why you have to take it um our bodies are designed like we're designed to be living outside hunting and catching our food like it's we're not we're and and don't get me wrong i love my lifestyle i love being able to just go to the grocery store and get shit i love being able to just you know stay in the house all day and you know like the reason humans were able to elevate is because we were able to make ourselves feel safe like we're not we're not constantly running from things all the time like if you think about dolphins dolphins are one of the most intelligent creatures on the planet but they can't 
they, they're living in the ocean. They have no shelter. So they're constantly on the lookout for something trying to eat them. Doggone orcas, man. Orcas. Orcas are fucking <laughs> yeah. murderers, man. Those, they're fucking yeah. By the way, have you ever seen a video of an elk t- or like a pack of wolves taking down an elk? Have you ever seen that? I mean, not recently. Oh, my God. It is crazy how like these wolves who are uh-huh. relatively small compared to the elk. Yeah. Take that motherfucker down. But what's really interesting to know is that, like, more often than not, those hunts are not successful. They fail. Yeah, I, man. So uh, the guy that I was playing the clip of earlier, man, he he is really good. I I need this kid to get like a YouTube channel or something. He's he's really good. I, he's on TikTok. Uh, his name's M N J ninety seven. He's he's an African dude. I think he's from Nigeria or something like that. But he does these weird animal facts. Like that's all he does on TikTok. He has like a couple hundred thousand followers. Dude is really interesting, man. And what he was saying was um, how the kill rate of like cheetahs and stuff is like, even lions is relatively low. I'm it's like, so really? low. I didn't yeah, know that. Like, and you know what else is crazy is people think that um, the male lions do a lot of the work and they, they don't. don't. They yeah. don't. It's all yeah. like, this is why I say like, women are fucking badass. Like even in the animal kingdom, women do most of the work, dude. Y'all like, <laughs> See, no, all right, right. He's about I, to get man. us canceled. <laughs> <laughs> but they they really don't kill as much as I thought they did, man. Mm-mm. There's uh the funny thing was he was mentioning that and he said something there's this little cat called I think a serval or something like that. It's a some small he said that thing is an actual beast in the cat world because it, oh, it kills everything, everything. And sometimes it kills for sport. <laughs> but he was saying it's it's still compared to like a lion is has like a 10 15 percent kill rate i was like really but i guess they um i think they give up a lot yeah because i I mean especially with cheetahs like they can't they like they um their hearts can't handle that 70 mile per hour burst yeah like it's literally like I, i was watching this thing on national geographic if they don't catch their prey in like less than a minute it's over it's a wrap yeah you, but you got to think, and, and they're skinny anyway, so they don't have like they got to like a they they probably have a seriously high metabolism. Yeah. But one thing I didn't know, man, uh, hyenas, <laughs> hyenas, hyenas can run up to thirty five miles per hour for two hours. Mm-hmm. Wolves. <laughs> wolves, man, wolves are fucking. Wolves are are scary. And they got like the bite force or something stupid. Yeah, it's, it's, like it's, wolves are wolves are really fucking scary. But you know what else? Like, you know what really? Wolf on my back. You know, like really the animals that scare. Like, like people. What's what's always kind of funny to me is how people like to vilify these animals, and I'm like, like they like to vilify wolves, and, and yeah, like they, they people like to vilify them, and like you know, or let's say like a kid gets too close to a alligator and the alligator bites the kid, whatever. People like to vilify the alligator. I'm like, nah, the alligator, alligator's, the alligator's doing what it does. Like the that's, alligator is alligatoring. Yeah. It, alligator's <laughs> alligatoring. Like that's, that's, what that's, doing. that's what it's doing. He like when you are an animal and you literally don't eat every day, you mm-hmm. have to eat what is close and available. What's there? So you, you, you hunt and, and that's no, what it's, do. it's not the prettiest thing. And it's, Sorry for but, the kid, but like, hey. But look at the opposite spectrum of that. Humans like to vilify certain animals because it looks it looks it looks terrible when like a, a jaguar chases down a baby uh whatever um dude gazelle or something. You, I'm gonna send you this video of a jaguar fucking pulling up fucking a tree pulling up something. Yeah, no, Pull, he pulls a one crocodile out of yeah, the fucking yeah. out of a yeah. tree. I was like, it. what? I've seen that. <laughs> you know, those are actually the strongest cats. Yes, they're strong. They're stronger than lions shit. and tigers. Like yeah. pound for pound. Yeah. They're strong as shit. Like lions and tigers are bigger, but jaguars but, are stronger. Strong. Yeah. But people like to put the people like to vilify the animals for killing stuff. But look at us. That, we kill stuff for no reason. For no reason. For no reason. There are literally motherfuckers who go out into the woods with a gun to go mount a trophy. And, exactly. For a trophy. For a trophy. If you eat it, hey, cool. by all means, do it. But just to kill something for no reason, just to put it on your wall? Like, I will, I will never, I will never agree with trophy hunting. I, I, I don't need it. I, like, what, why do you need to do that? 
I don't know. Like, why? Why is know. it necessary for you to go end an animal's life halfway across the world that has nothing to do with you? That isn't a viable food source. Mm-hmm. Now, there are some people who trophy hunt and they don't take the meat themselves, but they do get it butchered and give it to like a local village or whatever. That's oh, it's still deplorable, but I'm a little more okay with that. That's still food chaining. It's still That's it's still, still part it's of still the- food. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. there's the animals still being used. It's not being disrespected. But those people who like Jimmy, Jimmy John's, like the dude who run, who owns Jimmy John's, I, mm-hmm. I've I, like I stopped eating at Jimmy John's once I found out he did that. Like well, I, I would have I would have stopped eating at Jimmy John's because of that. But the fact that they call themselves gourmet subs and they don't even leave hot. Uh, yeah. I was I was out. And I asked for bacon on the sandwich one time and he didn't have it. So I I never went back. I will say, I remember like a couple years ago, I used to get the um the the tuna with a little bit of provolone. <laughs> Talking about sandwiches. With, with the provolone and like some bacon on it. Oh yeah. They had they so they had bacon. Yeah, they okay. have bacon, dude. Like you I mean You can't so, have a gourmet sandwich if it's not hot. I don't I don't care. I'd never I listen, it was just cheap. And at that point in time, I was going to Cape Fear so I could walk to it from campus. Yeah, but they call it gourmet. I'm like, man, you, that's ain't even hot. <laughs> you don't even melt cheese. All right. So, well, we got uh, we got one more thing. Which one are you doing? And um, I want to hear yours first. All right. So for those of you who don't know, um, I stole a game idea from a couple podcasts that I, I like to watch. Oh, excuse me. Coffee burp. Um <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Shit. You all right, bro? Yeah, man. The coffee was like... <laughs> you struggling? Coffee was like, coffee was like hey. Yeah. Uh, nah, but anyway, we like to do this thing called One Gotta Go. Mm-hmm. And uh, this week, I decided to uh, make it very, very difficult. Actually, you didn't, but go ahead. Really? No. Oh, uh, well, I know which one yours is then. If that's what you said, I know exactly which one yours is. <laughs> go ahead. Um, but we're doing One Gotta Go out of dave matthews band records and it's, oh uh, uh little side note they okay i think the best band ever is earth wind and fire but my favorite band to listen to right now uh, my favorite band to watch is the dave matthews band i'm a huge dave matthews fan been a fan of the drummer the musicians all of that stuff so that's a little known fact that's why we went here because he knows i'm a dave matthews fan also the same um yeah <laughs> uh but so the records are Crash, mm-hmm. Between These Crowded Streets, mm-hmm. Under the Table and Dreaming, and mm-hmm. Big Whiskey and the Grew Grux King. And what's your question, sir? Which one you letting go? The last one, man. Big Whiskey and the Grew Grux really? whatever Grew Grux King or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you why. The other one's got sentimental sent like some kind of sentimental value between it on it. And uh all of the first three were produced by Steve Lillywhite, the first. That was the first producer yeah. of their albums. And so they all have a similar jam band quality to them. I didn't like it when somebody else produced them because they sound different. Even though everybody has to grow and get their own, you know, they get tired of doing the same thing, but and they grow and their sounds kind of uh, morph into something else. And, but they still sounded like they Matthews, but they didn't. Um, and they had started to change a little bit, but then they started to go back to it. But by then I was like, uh. I don't really like this, but with Crash, so that was my first int- introduction to Dave Matthews. So I was I was with them right then. Yeah, between these cr- uh, between these crowded streets, this is gonna sound weird, but I thought that album was weird. But and this is gonna be a little musicy, musicy, whatever, like an inside thing. But Carter Beaufort snare in that album. Oh, it's fire. That is okay. I'm Man. glad you said it because Man. I 100% agree. His snare that on that snare. record. Oh, my God. Oh God. Whatever, whatever <laughs> his tech did, whatever Carter did, whatever he's like, oh, and, Carter. And I don't Carter know this is an used- all call for Carter Beaufort. If you could yeah. tell us the exact specs and I what you it. did on that record, I got to know. All I know is a Yamaha snare because he plays Yamaha, but I don't know if it was a piccolo. I don't know if it was fire. Good. Yes. Fire. Like I low so, key want to go back and sample that snare. I just yeah. Like, so he, li- they literally got me because of that snare. And then I listened to the rest of the album and I, I love the album. I love that album. A snare. Like I that's gotta, what got me. <laughs> see for me, 
I'm getting rid of Under the Table and Dreaming. Are you really? Yeah. Wait, which, okay, so which one was first, Under the Table and Dreaming or Crash? I think Crash came out first. Crash might have, I don't know. Either way. Crash either way. came out, Crash came out first. Crash had to come out first. I think you're right. Because I, I remember, I remember being in school when Under the Table, like, like, uh, Element like I remember being able to know that a new Dave Matthews record was coming out when Under the Tristan, Table. I don't think you. I don't, I don't. This album is older than you think. I think. No, not Under the Table and Dreaming. I Crash think, is I, old. I think, I think that album came out in like '95. <laughs> I don't think so. Dave Matthews has been around a long time. Man. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I'm googling. Hold on. <laughs> I wish I could type faster. Under the table and dreaming holy shit it came out in 94 yeah i was no i knew it i knew it was close. wait so crash wait came out no, maybe i think maybe maybe hold on maybe crash came out later nah no I don't, I don't think it did under the table and 96 dreaming, I don't which, okay 96 97 and crash um, came out in 96 um so what the fuck but yeah between man these, between these crowded streets is old between these crowded streets, like two thousand five or something. So that like, must be the one I remember coming out because, like, yeah, I I yeah. remember being able to know that there was a Dave Matthews record coming out. And, oh, you know what? That that album was a big deal because it uh, they went a while between. between no, albums. you know what record it was? It was Stand Up. Yeah, it was yeah. Stand Up. Stand Up. Because this one came out between these crowded streets came out in ninety eight. Stand Up came mm-hmm. out because that's the one that had American Baby on it. Down American by the Baby Bayou, uh, yep. Dream Girl was on that record because that was yeah. like that was the yeah no I remember okay my memory's coming back now because like I remember the video for Dream Girl. So so my favorite song off that album is uh Sleep the Dreamer. The way I, I love Carter that song Carter, too. Carter, I, love Carter, I know he, I'm a surf later. Yeah man, that's my that's my, my song love right to there. Hate her. Yeah. Oh, that was fucking, yeah. Oh. yeah. But see. I like I so it took me a minute to creator. like that album. Yeah, it took me a minute to like the album because they made the drum sound so big, and I was like, "That's not that's not what they do. That's not what they do." But I ended up liking it, and then that's when it they grew started. on me. Like, yeah, I, it, it I I will say I instantly fell in love with uh, "Sleep to Dream Her" mm-hmm. and uh, "Dream Girl." Yeah, um, I also instantly fell in love. I didn't like "American Baby" at first, so I liked the end of it. Yeah, I just liked the end. I didn't like yeah. the actual song. It's Carter goes um, crazy at the end of it. Then, well, like him and Leroy just have a have a certain connection. That's hard they do, to, man. They, they really like, do. Uh, it's Leroy. crazy, at, and this is another in, inside in, inside a musician thing. But usually, the drummer and the bass player have like this this thing, and that's that's normally the case. But in that band, it it, it was Carter and uh and Leroy. Yeah, like Leroy. Rest in peace, Leroy. Rest in peace, Leroy. Um, still arguably. When I when I talk about saxophone sound is Leroy's you know, will always be top three for me. You know I can actually he is the probably the only saxophone player that will actually if I sight unseen I could tell who I could tell who it is. I know you're better at that well, <laughs> because yeah, you, you know but that but, I, I play saxophone. That's the yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the only saxophone player I can like hear I'm like that's that's Leroy. But yeah. He's um, no longer with us. And when I was younger, when I was younger. Um, that was definitely the case. Like Leroy, I think what what's cra- and this is not to get too cerebral, but um, to talk about like early, like really early subconscious musical influences. Like Leroy was the blueprint for me for what a saxophone player should sound like. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Like once I once I like because this was I had heard Leroy before I started playing saxophone. Like the first mm-hmm. time I heard Dave Matthews. I was playing drums. Um, yeah, yeah. And I was always really intrigued by Leroy's restraint that, mm-hmm. like, he could do anything on saxophone, but he chose to play what the music needed. Never yeah. more, never less. And it was always just so succinct with what was going on. Like, you, like, I I don't think I've ever heard a passage from Leroy that I didn't like, that I didn't think was extremely tasteful. That even and and not just on the recordings, even the live stuff. Like I just mm-hmm. 
Like I, for me, Leroy will always be top two influences for sure. Yeah. You know what my favorite Leroy, uh, as far as him playing in Dave Matthews on recordings, it, the, my favorite thing that he played was the intro to uh, Crush. On before these crowded streets. Mm-hmm. Just that little beep, 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 beep. Uh, I was just like, oh, Right, man. just perfect. It's, so yeah, it's perfect. It's exactly And it's what... not hard. It's not no. fucking complicated. And like, but it I, was... I, it... <laughs> <laughs> and the thing, like, and this is kind of selfish, but the thing about Leroy's death that really saddened me is like, I didn't get a chance to meet him. Like, yeah. that was... I'm not super heavy into like the whole, you know, like if, if I manage to, you know, meet someone or whatever, but like, I don't, I, I have very few aspirations of meeting someone. Like I have people yeah. I respect. And if I run into them, obviously there's, I'm going to try and have a conversation, but I don't want, I would never go out of my way. Yeah. Um, I'm not a starstruck kind of person either. Um, Leroy was definitely one of those, like, I, I have to meet him one day. So little, so I'll tell you this when uh, we, when we actually, I actually finally finally got a chance to see them in concert. Um, it was actually, even though Leroy had been, how, Leroy died more than, uh, plus 10 years ago, right? 10 years ago at this point, plus 10 yeah. years, right? 12 years even though 10? I knew that, it was still weird. Seeing them without seeing Leroy. Seeing them up there without, and I've never seen them in person. You know, I was like, ah, oh, that's not Leroy. You know what's funny is Jeff Coffin actually talks about that. He talks about like how it's weird having to fill those shoes because – not only was he, uh, and I don't know him personally, so this is just conjecture yeah. hearsay from coming from me. Um, but not only was Leroy a, a phenomenal saxophone player, but he was just such a good spirit and a good person. Like, yeah, and that people legitimately missed him. I I believe it. I believe it. He like, was just, and he was like a simple dude. Just li- he lived chilling. on a farm. Yeah, and but he could play the mess out of a saxophone. Like man. again, that intro to fuck that intro to Crush is yeah. That is one of my top four saxophone solos of all time. And, and you know what? Uh, when we when we wrap this show, send me a text to remind me to. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a clip. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna find the clip of that either either from the album or an extra live clip if they played the same. I'm gonna find the clip and put it in there. It's just to see if you guys can get a feeling of what me and Tristan are talking about. Yeah. Because like, this is some inside it's musician like, stuff, right? Man, here. like the thing of the thing about like Leroy, like I. And it's funny because I've never like I don't think I don't I don't get a chance to talk about Leroy often because like in you know in the circles I travel and no one really listens to Leroy like that like I try to put people on but like and it's not like he had a solo album for yeah you know. he, yeah he and he didn't have like a solo release so it's not like you can just right. point like if they weren't fans of jam bands you they gotta weren't listen gonna to listen Dave to, Matthews yeah. and listen to him so which that makes sense. also speaking of Dave Matthews I love Dave Matthews as a songwriter I his lyrics are amazing um, he he's. I, He's I was cerebral, a, man. You ever listen to Here On Out? I, no, no, I haven't. I haven't. Dude, listen to that track. Like he, uh, he, he, you, you could tell he is in love with somebody. Man, it's, it's like I told you, I'm listening to their music. I'm not listening to the words. The music's I'll, beautiful too. And I'll sit there and sing the words, but I'm like, I don't put it, I don't go with the meaning. Right. right. But, um, I, man, they, they just got some good stuff. Like, uh, what which which album was Where Are You Going On? I think that might have been on the soundtrack, but I think they put it on an album too. Where are you going? I am no Superman. Yeah. I have no answer for you. So I know that was on the uh, soundtrack of some Adam Sandler movie, but I can't remember what it was. Uh, no, um, it's on an album. It's on yeah. an album. I think I if I'm... Uh, so let me tell you why I particularly like this album, because I think um, Where Are You Going is on this and Busted Stuff. I think it's on Busted Stuff. I think it's on Busted Stuff. So on Busted Stuff, I feel like they dressed that entire album down. Like they took, they just, it, it, it's yeah. that album sounds like they just took mics and just put them in the room and went very minimal on effects and stuff like yeah. that. Cause the drum sounds so raw. The sax sounds so raw. His vocals sound raw. Everything just sound like it was just simplified. And it's uh-huh. literally one of my favorite albums, even though it's not, you didn't list it cause they got like 10 albums, but yeah, they, they, there's a lot of records to choose from. Where are you going? I love that song. Uh, Leroy plays like this really sweet <laughs> solo in it, and it's short, but it's sweet. <laughs> it's, and that's I just, the thing. I, I don't think yeah. anyone was better at saying more by saying less than Leroy. I don't think yes. anyone was better than than that. Yes. Because like here's here here's the thing. Like, um, 
there are like people who don't play a lot of notes, but a lot of times it's like in that cont- it's like in that instrumental jazz, it, instrumental pop jazz stuff, right? Like, yeah. It's like it's it doesn't feel authentic. It doesn't feel like it's actually what that what that person's trying to express. And again, that's pure like just me trying to digest that music. But like, as far as I'm concerned, Leroy could play four notes and it could sound better. Mm-hmm. To me, than a train solo. Mm-hmm. I, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Because it it actually sounds like it comes from a place a, instead yeah, of just it, like an and not yeah. to, and I, I get train was the wrong example because train is one of the most spiritual people ever. Train was a bad example. Um, any oh, any any I'm one not of them. Anything about bad about train either? Because I don't. Yeah. you that's you. You know you know yeah. Coltrane. I, like yeah, yeah tra- I, I was train's a bad example. That was a bad John example. That was, just the, that was just the first saxophone player that popped into my head that was in the jazz idiom. But like I, I think really any any of the modern guys, like any of the modern guys, I won't go into name and names because there's so many of them out there now. Um, but like any of the modern guys, like Leroy, they they would I I could envision Leroy pulling up to a jam that they were at and like blowing the smoke out of them with like four notes because his sense of time and like he, his expression and like just the just even on the pure basis of a saxophone sound uh-huh. like the way the notes sound coming from him like Leroy Chris Potter all of mm-hmm. them have a very distinct sound like I know Chris Potter when I hear it immediately I know Leroy Moore when I hear it immediately I know Jeff Coffin when I hear it immediately. I think I, you know what? I think Jeff is the only other person I probably could pick out. And that's because like, and not, it's not funny in the ha ha sense. It's just Jeff, Co- he's a quirk. He seems like a quirky dude. So his sound is kind of quirky and it's fun. Yeah. And I've, he's one of the ones that I've listened to because I've listened to, um, Bela Fleck. Bela Fleck. Yeah. And the Fleck tone. So I, I, I kind of know his, how he plays a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I can, yeah, I, I could pick him out and it kind of, you can hear it in the Dave Matthews stuff. Now you can, you can hear that that influence and good i mean they, they were always around each other anyway yeah. so it sounds well similar. That, guess it's oh. time <laughs> is it yeah it's his time um anyway guys uh we kind of went on a, a real heavy rant there we're probably about like 20 minutes over but leave all that in there leave it all in oh well, um, hang on for a second uh, yeah, I, uh congratulations are in order um what? tristan you didn't know this but man i just reached a thousand followers on tiktok hey <laughs> Hey. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, uh, yay me. All right, go ahead. All right, I guess I'm going to take us out. Thank you all for listening to another episode of The Heck You Want. You just listened to me and Willie rant for about 20 minutes on how much we love Leroy Moore um, from <laughs> Dave Matthews. Rest in peace to that guy. Um, real, real. Uh, I remember actually being like physically sad, like one time. Like, man. I know, I know. I'm going to keep this for short. Um, I remember like when they announced he got in the ATV accident and like he was in the hospital. Yeah. I was like, okay, he's going to, he'll pull through. And then like a couple days later he was dead. And I was like, oh, damn. Yeah. Um, I, I cried a little bit. I did. I like dropped the, one. I, I did I a did. movie I was, cry. Yeah, I, I dropped yeah. one. Um, but anyway, uh, thanks for listening, guys. Um, please uh, like, share, subscribe on YouTube, rate us on Apple yes. Podcasts. Um, one of the cool things I want to make a real quick announcement. Um, I'm going into production this week on some shows that will be going on the Patreon only. So if you are not a Patreon member, you will not have access to those shows. So please, please, please go to our Patreon, sign up, support us, everything you donate. Um, you can donate whatever you feel comfortable with starting from $5, um, $5 a month. And, uh, everything that goes from that will go towards increasing production value, buying equipment, things like that. That way we can make this as good as possible for you guys um to keep you entertained during these crazy ass covid corona quarantine times so uh anyway um i am one half of your hosting squad tb on the sax <laughs> dude now hold up now this is your that fault. was on me this is your fault <laughs> this is you <laughs> i just ran God. out of steam man you I just, did I, you just I, peed I, it out man i'm like what <laughs> What? <laughs> I was I was hoping you were paying close enough attention. I was like, please, please take it. I can't. No, I, can't I was waiting it. for the and my and to my whatever, and I was waiting for the end. <laughs> oh, I'm man. Willie D. Genius. I'm back, baby. All right. Hold the fuck up. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What?
what, man? You make me so motherfucking sick. Ah. <laughs> Let me do my thing, all right? Pick a name and stick with it. I got all right, peace, queens, love, and nigga. all that other bullshit. We out.